up guys welcome to kaya's complicated life um i am kaya as y'all can see um so i know y'all see like this little bruise on my face we're gonna get into that but um so yeah today we are just talking about um basically transportation um when you're handicapped um how terrible it is <laughs> um so i'm gonna be talking about three different well four different things first i'm gonna talk about the indigo open door then we're gonna talk about the uh medicaid transportation then we're gonna talk about this place called freedom motors and then the muscular dystrophy foundation so we are just gonna go ahead and get started um I haven't done a sit-down video in forever, <laughs> but okay. Like I said, we're starting with Indigo, the Indigo Open Door. Um, So I know y'all see, you know, like the big Indigo buses that be riding around. They have the regular Indigo buses, you know, they go to the different bus stops and then they have the Indigo Open Door. The Indigo Open Door is basically for disabled and handicapped people. Um, they come, you call, set up a time. Well, you have to, like, apply and be eligible and all that. And then, like, you um, call, set up your ride. You have to call. Um, you can't call no earlier than two days before. Um, you can call the day before, but you can't call the day of. It has to be the day before or two days before. Um, so you call... Tell them where you're going, what time you need to be there, or what time you want to get picked up. Then you tell them uh, where you, like, what time you want to uh, be picked up to go back home. So, each ride is $3.50. Not, like, there and back. Literally, every single time you get on that bus, is three fifty. So, if I was to, like, you know... Go to a doctor's appointment. I will pay three fifty there, three fifty back. So seven dollars in total. So they, the Indian Open Door. I don't know. They have terrible community service or not community service. Terrible customer service. Um, I had this man one time. I went to go get my hair done. So I basically I called them to see what time they were coming because. I think my appointment was like at like three something or three thirty or something like that. I was done around six thirty seven. Um, I'm pretty sure I had set it up for it to come back at seven, but I called and they were telling me, "Okay, well, your bus is this far away." Blah blah. blah I don't remember, but then that time came and it wasn't there. So. I called um, again, I think it was like 20 minutes had passed and I called again and they told me, oh, I'm sorry, the driver uh, that was on hit their way to you just got into an accident, so we're going to have to try to find another bus that can come to you. Mind you, this around this time, it's like 7.30. So, um, he's telling me, the man, I'm not going to say his name because, you know, I'm just not going to say his name, but... He tells me, um, it looks like we can't get a bus to you until around 9.30. I said, um, excuse me? I said, the place that I'm at is about to close. Like, I'm at a beauty shop. Like, the, the place is about to close. And he's like, well, we're running, uh, sh we're short on staff and all this and that. We can't get anybody to you until 9.30 and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay that's not going to work like i'm in a wheelchair for one for two it's freezing cold outside like literally bitter cold outside and this place is about to close so you tell me i'm about to have to sit outside for two hours no so he like i'm like telling him all this and he starts laughing and i'm like are you laughing at me like are you so serious right now so i start going off because like what are you really laughing at me? You're laughing at a handicapped person that's telling you that the place that they're at is about to close and that it's freezing cold outside and you're laughing at me. 
So I went off. Um, I ended up hanging up and calling back so that I could talk to somebody else. Um, I ended up reporting him um, twice. And for some reason, he's still working there. Like, he still calls me uh, when dispatch calls to let me know that my ride is outside. He's still, like, he's majority of the time the one that calls. Like, yeah, Miss Clemens, your ride is outside. And, you know, I don't, like, you know, get smarter, catch attitude with him or nothing like that. But it's just a simple fact that this man literally laughed at me. Y'all still got him working there? Like, what kind of crap is that? But anyway, <laughs> um, y'all, I wrote everything down, so I, if I keep looking down, that's why. Um, so another thing about them, they only go, it's only supposed to go for, I guess, Marion County. Um, so they literally do not cross those boundaries. Like, <laughs> it could be, I guess, Walmart is considered Fisher's. And Meyer is considered um, Marion County. I have no idea how this works, but um, on 96th Street, if you you know if you know you know, on 96th Street, there's a Meyer and a Walmart literally right across the street from each other. They told me one day I was trying to go to um, Walmart. They told me one day we don't go to Walmart. We can take you to Meyer though. Are you joking? Like, are you joking? That makes absolutely no sense. Like, absolutely no sense. So, I don't know. I The very last time that I used... Well, not the very last time, but the second to last time I used it, which was about a month and a half ago, I ended up with this scar on my face. Um, I'm going to insert like a video or a picture or something showing y'all how it originally looked. But what happened was, um, about a month and a half ago, I, um, where did I go? I went to get my nails done. I went to my cousin. Well, she's not really my cousin, but our mama's is like super close and we basically grew up together. So I call her my cousin. Um, but I went, she goes to this school, this cosmetology school, and she um, does nails and stuff like that. So I went to get my nails done. Um, and so they told me they couldn't drop me off at the place that I was trying to get dropped off at because I guess it was considered Fishers. I don't know. But there was a Goodwill right across the street. Of course, they go there. So I had to get dropped off at the Goodwill. And after getting dropped off at the Goodwill, I had to cross the street. Um, I made it across the street. And of course, it was freezing outside. So I had, um, you know, my big coat on, this big poofy coat. Um, and I had a blanket that was like wrapped around my legs because it was freezing. Um, I went to Arby's because Arby's was right there and I'm trying to think how this all happened. I went to Arby's because Arby's was right there and it was like, it was, I was kind of early. So it wasn't time for me to go to, um, my appointment yet. So I went to Arby's, left out of Arby's, first of all. <laughs> went to Arby's and the lady I don't know I feel like she was probably new or something I have no idea but she literally took my order walked away from the register after I put my card in the thing never once like pressed the button for like me to pay with card so she starts handing out people's orders and when my food is done she hands me my food and then she goes back to start handing out orders and she just looks at me while I'm still sitting there so she still had not orders. I waited literally like two minutes and she still never came back. So I just left. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but I just left because it was like at that point, I was like, I still had to make it to my destination in my wheelchair. And it's like, she wasn't trying to let me pay. So I'm like, okay, thank you for my free food. <laughs> but I feel like uh, it might have been, you know, real quick karma because... 
I leave out, you know, go up on the sidewalk that was like closest or whatever. And it was like unlevel, like the sidewalk was unlevel. So one of the like pieces of the sidewalk was like up and then it was like a, a, a bump or whatever. I guess I hit the bump and my blanket that was wrapped around my legs, like, I guess came from behind my foot or something and got caught in the wheel. So, of course, I came out of the chair. <laughs> um, you know, at the time, it wasn't funny. You know, I was like really hurt. I was in pain. I was crying. It was terrible. But, um, you know, I was, like, pretty much thrown out of my chair. Like, the blanket got caught in the wheel. Of course, it was wrapped around me, so it pulled me out of the chair. And I landed on the ground on my face, which is where this came from. I'm going to put a video... But this is how it's looking now. But um, luckily, there was this man. Um, there was this white man. Um, he, I don't know if he was like going into the place that was right there that I was in front of or if he was like coming out. I don't know what was going on. But he saw me, like he saw the whole thing and he instantly ran right over to me and was like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? He was so nice, like so nice. Um, he tried to like help me up, but he couldn't like get me up by himself. So I guess he had friends or brothers or something. I don't know. But he came back with two more men and they all ended up helping me up and back into my chair. Um, and you know, made sure everything was situated before I rolled off. But uh, my mom, she, I was on the phone with her when it happened. She was quick. <laughs> she came right, right to where I was at. Um, but yeah, we ended up calling, um, what's it called? Uh, the Indigo to see if they would come back. Because at that point, I was like, wasn't really trying to get my nails done. Because I'm like, I'm in pain. Like, I'm ready to go home and go to sleep now. So, um called them they was giving my mom the run around i was crying so like i really couldn't talk but they was giving my mom the run around and at that point i was like okay i know they're not coming back like i know they're not so then she was like the lady was like well dispatch isn't answering so i'm gonna have to send them an email they're not checking nobody's emails if they're not answering the phone so i ended up was just like okay forget it let's just start my nails see if you know we can get them done before the bus comes back i had the bus set up for it to come back at 3 30. do you want to guess what time the bus came back i'm gonna give y'all a minute's guess because it wasn't 3 30. <laughs> it sure was 3 30. even though i called them at like 1 30 for them to come back after they dropped me off at 1230 because of what happened. So the bus came back around 430. It was probably almost five o'clock. And I was very pissed because at that point I was like, my face was bleeding. My ankle was bleeding. Like I was like, my face was throbbing. And it was just like, I asked y'all to come back two hours almost three hours ago and y'all literally took y'all didn't even come back when it was time for y'all to come back like when i had my ride up at 3 30 y'all didn't even come back y'all was still an hour late so i don't know it's just the indigo open door is gotta be probably the worst transportation actually no <laughs> it's one of the worst handicapped transportations because it's very ridiculous like the way they have like the whole like Marion County thing set up like I understand you know going to certain counties but it's like if something is literally across the street and you're telling a handicapped person they can drop you can drop them off across the street and they have to cross the street to get to their destination 
that's dangerous. Like, especially if they, like, are in a walker or a cane or something, that is dangerous. In a wheelchair with no sidewalks, that's dangerous. Like, they need to do better. It doesn't make any sense. But, um, yeah, they're never on time. I just want to make sure I got everything. Um, never on time. I be having to, like, make my appointments, like... If I have, like, okay, for example, if I have an appointment... And I call to set up my ride and they tell me, you know, we can come get you at this time. I'm like, okay, that's fine. When that day comes, that time will come and they will not be there. Like, it's not every time, but majority of the time, that's what happens. Like, my last two doctor's appointments. No. Okay, let's do this. My neurology appointment, neurology appointment, my, um, I haven't seen my neurologist since before the pandemic started because 2020, you know, everybody canceled all their in-office appointments and all that, all that, whatever. Last year, she was still like having virtual appointments or something. I don't even remember, but February, this February, I had an appointment on Valentine's Day. I wanted to change it because I was like, I feel like they're going to be busy on Valentine's Day. I don't really know if I really even want to, you know, mess with the Indigo bus on Valentine's Day. But I was just like, forget it. I'm just going to go because I had called and they were like, well, we don't have another appointment until like May. And I was like, okay, well, that's not going to work. So I was just like, okay, forget it. The bus <laughs> literally did not pull up until the time of my appointment. And I was, like, on the phone, like, trying to call them on sitting on hold for 20 minutes at a time, like, back to back to back because they wasn't answering the phone. So I ended up having to reschedule the appointment for May, and I haven't seen her in, like, two years because the Indigo bus took so freaking long to show up. Like, it... <laughs> I just really hate riding the indigo bus and then it's like i'm having to use seven dollars every single time and it's like i'm late half the time like if i just want to you know go to the mall or something i'll get there an hour late and i'm only trying to go for like two hours so then if i get there an hour late i'm only able to stay for like an hour because most of the time they're on time to pick you up to take you home but majority of the time they're late to take you where you need to go like <laughs> i just really be like blown with them to be honest <sighs> but um yeah so a lot of the drivers like i'll tell them like oh they dispatch told me that you guys don't go to where i'm trying to go so i'm going to this place and they'll be like, we do go there. And I'm like, okay, well, then why are they telling me that y'all don't? Like, I just, I don't know. Indigo Open Door just needs some work. They need to uh, make it make sense for these handicapped people, for us handicapped people, because it's honestly ridiculous. I shouldn't have a scar on my face right now. Because y'all couldn't take me where I needed to go across the street. Literally across the street. So, now we're going to talk about Medicaid insurance. Um, their transportation. <laughs> tried twice. Um, for one, they only take you to doctor's appointments. And I think the grocery store. But, um, both times was a doctor's appointment. Both times, they never showed up. Like, first time, talked to a lady. Like, I had to call them both times, first of all. They didn't call and like, oh, your ride's on the way. No, I had to call them both times. Um, check, see, like, hey, where's my ride? Um, they're like, okay, we don't have a vehicle, vehicle at this time. So, we'll let you know when we do. Like... Lady called me back the first time and told me, um, 
we might not have a driver until this time. Can you call and see if you can change your appointment? Tried to change my appointment. They told me, okay, you can come at this time, which was like two and a half hours later or whatever. Call the people back. We still don't have a driver. I'm sorry. Why do y'all have people set up rides two days in advance if y'all are not going to have them arrive when it's time for them to go to where they need to go? The second time, they didn't even call and tell me, like, they didn't call me back. Like, I called them. They told me, we don't have a driver at this time. We'll let you know when. Never call. Missed that appointment, too. We're not even about to go no more into the Medicaid transportation because it's trash. Just, that's, that's it. One word. That's it. It's trash. It might work for some people, but if you're in a wheelchair, nine times out of ten, you're not going to get a ride. Now, to top it all off, <laughs> my mom saw this car, um, van, whatever, and it had like a ramp on the back or whatever, and it was called Freedom Motors. So, I'm assuming it's like a co like dealership type thing where they just have vehicles for like wheelchair accessible vehicles. I called them to see like if they just like rent them or if they like finance them or like how it works. Filled out a credit application. I mean not a credit application, a is it a credit application? I don't really know. Fill out an application finance application, I don't know. And my credit is not, you know, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's like, it's fair. So, he tells me, you're either going to need a significant down payment or a cosigner. I'm like, okay, well, what's a significant down payment? This man <laughs> tells me $30,000. Now, please explain to me, have y'all ever been to a dealership and they told you that you needed a $30,000 down payment for a car that's $46,000? Are you joking? And then on top of that, I'm handicapped. Like, y'all selling cars for people who need wheelchairs. And you're sitting here telling me that it's a $30,000 down payment on a car that's $46,000 and the car's on sale. And my credit is fair. Like, I could have understood if my credit was, like, 300 or something. But no. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, I was literally blown when he said that to me. And then on top of that, this man told me, and you might still need a cosigner. Who's giving y'all $30,000 and a cosigner? Like, at that point, I was like, okay, I don't even want to give you my business because that don't even make sense. Like, literally makes no sense. So, I don't know. I'm just having a really hard time trying to find some good transportation. I, I don't, I just, I'm tired of being in the house. I really want to go back to working, but it's hard to do that when you don't have any transportation. Um, my mama, she's been off from my grandma passing, but she's not, she doesn't have the best days all the time. Um, and then when she goes back to work, like she's not going to be able to take me to work. So I'm just having a really hard time finding transportation. I want my own transportation. I need my own transportation because the transportation that they give you or that you got to pay for is terrible. So I'm just like, I don't know. Um, currently, the Muscular Dystrophy Foundation is doing a van um, giveaway. Um, I tried it last year. I made it to step two, and then they didn't accept it for step, step three. So I'm trying again. Um, they gave away two vans last year. They're giving away two vans this year. So hopefully, y'all, please pray. Please pray for me. 
um, say a prayer that I am one of the two people that get a van because I it would very much be appreciated. Like, it's very much needed. Um, I just, I literally am miserable sometimes because it's like going through this process it's like trying to get used to it and everything it's just it's hard it's it's really hard um I'm trying not to cry um I don't know life is just my life is just so much harder than most people and people really don't understand that. Like, you will never understand what it's like to have muscular dystrophy unless you have muscular dystrophy. And it's just hard. It's, it's just really hard. And then it's like, my apartment is really small. And with me having been in a wheelchair, it's like, I run into stuff all the time. Like, I know y'all see my closet behind me. It's not on the tracks because I hit it. <laughs> that's it like you can't see you'll see on my shoes but it's a hole at the bottom of the door because I ran into the door like this is just like and my iPad is sitting on my bed so it's like y'all can see how small my room is like I barely ever come in here with my chair because I'm always bumping into something. So, I don't know. It's just... And then on top of that, I'm, like, a person that likes to be outside. Like, you know, I don't, you know, want to go, like, camping or, like, in the woods. I mean, maybe one day, but I just like being outside. Like, I don't really like being in the house. And it's like, I'm stuck here. Because I don't have the right transportation. And it's like, it would be easier if, like, we could just get a ramp put on my mom's car. But it's like, you can only get ramps put on certain cars unless it's made like that. So, I don't know. Um, the muscular dystrophy van giveaway is actually a really, really long process. But it will definitely be worth it. <laughs> um... They actually don't even pick a winner until December. Um, well, they pick a winner in, I think, September. But they don't tell you that you won until December. So, I don't know. That would be a great birthday gift <laughs> and Christmas gift, you know, a new van. Um, you know, that is going to make me less miserable and get me to my doctor's appointments and things like that. But I don't know. I just, you know, wanted to sit here and vent to y'all. I haven't vented to y'all in a long time. I don't really have nobody to vent to anyway. So, you know, why not I vent to y'all? <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to wrap up this video. Um... I don't really know what else to say. I guess I'm going to continue to try to, you know, get through this and work hard to, you know, find a way to get the transportation that I need. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just, it's just a waiting game for this van giveaway. <sighs> but anyway... I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. If you are not, um, hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post. Um, I'm trying to do better at posting. I really am. It's just been hard. Especially after my grandma passed. It's just been... It's been hard. So... Not having, you know... Anybody... To really talk to. I really honestly sit and talk to my mom and my auntie all day, every day. Like, I literally don't talk to anybody else. 
not my brother or sister, not no cousins, nobody. Like, literally just my mom and my auntie. And so, it's just, you know, when you literally don't have nobody, it's just hard. Because, it's like, my mom, you know, she is having a hard time. My auntie, she's having a hard time, too. So, it's just, like, they don't always, you know, want to sit on the phone with me. I mean, I'm sure they don't have a problem with it, but it's just, like, I don't want them to have to always, you know, like, sit on the phone with me or, like, I don't know. I just, it would be nice to have somebody else, but I'm just working on being there for myself. Um, so... Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, once again, like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, comment down below, um, you know, any suggestions y'all have as far as, you know, like handicapped transportation in Indianapolis or like any content you guys want to see, like what do you, you guys want to see me do or what do you guys want to hear about, you know, I'm all ears. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, um, this is Kaya's Complicated Life, um, and your girl Kaya is about to go find something to eat. <laughs> so, I will see y'all in the next video.